Hello, Champagne Charlie here with Philip Massey and Ryan Malloy. Just before they're going to step on stage as the leads in London's favourite hit show, Jersey Boys, for this week's Pod by Cast. My name's Philip Bullcock, and I play Nick Massey, who's the bass player of the Four Seasons. The mystery guy, he's the one who you don't quite know what's going on in his head at any one time during the show. Mystery guy, basically, he doesn't have many lines. <laughs> <laughs> That's another way of saying it. You can say it like that. I have the least lines. But hey, I'm not sore. My name is Ryan Malloy, I play Frankie Valley. I have all the lines. I'm the songs. Yeah, I do my best. Yeah. I'm, I'm from Bury, uh, a place called Jericho, actually, in Bury, which sounds very... Um, very romantic um, it's not really but um, very just north of Manchester and uh, a million miles away from New Jersey New Jersey I come from Newcastle uh, which is uh, a, a small town called North Shields which is in the northeast of England and um, basically the accent I'm speaking in now is, is my uh, ladies and gentlemen this evening's vocal warm up is about <laughs> to my warm up accent <laughs> this evening's vocal warm up is about to commence on stage thank you oh missing the warm up I know I got the part uh, out of the blue. Um, I was I was doing a lot of film work at the time. I'd just done some TV stuff, and uh, my agent called me and said, "There's this doo wop musical." Um, so he actually like, used doo wop. Yeah, he said it's a doo wop musical. So I was like, "Right, okay, what's that?" And uh, he said, "Well, you know, start the music." And I thought, "Okay, fine." And I went and had a few meetings, always in a rush because I was always filming at the time, so I had to be back on set, so I was like, you know, I can't stay for long. And then they called me on the last day of filming and said, can you go to New York to meet the choreographer in New York? So I did, they flew me over to New York, I saw the show, I met Sergio Trujillo, uh, who's our uh, noble and most venerated choreographer. Venerated. And, uh, yeah. And, you were uh, going to drop big words, I uh, knew uh, it. There you go. And, uh, or venerable, I think it should be. Venerable choreographer. Still and, good. Uh, and yeah, did an audition with him in, in, in a room just off Broadway, a studio there, and the uh, same day they called my agent, he called me in the hotel and said, you've got the role. And uh, yeah, I was filled instantly with dread, I'll explain that in a minute. So basically, they bribed you with a holiday. Yeah, that's right, in a nice hotel. And, you know, Virgin Upper Class. <laughs> it works, doesn't it? So, I mean, I'm down with that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm down with that. My note, I was, um, I was in Edinburgh at the time, and I had to come down uh, on the Midnight Special, the Midnight Train. And I was actually in a show called Eurobeat, and I was um, dressed in my Sarajevo outfit, which was uh, very spangly, golden, leotard. And I had to run through the streets of Edinburgh into my taxi cab and get on the... Uh, the midnight special. I got, I got on uh, only like two minutes to spare, and uh, managed to tranquilize myself up so I could get a little bit of sleep in the night. But uh, took a shower in King's Cross, and then uh, the next day, you know, warmed up in, in um, some public toilets, and then I was able to audition for Mr. Des. <laughs> As usual, Mac enough. <laughs> I sang uh, "Run Around Sue," I think it was, and "Great Balls of Fire," accompanied by myself on the guitar, just about. Good lord. Yeah. What did you sing? I sang "Build Me Up, Buttercup." I tell you what, though, what's funny about my auditions is something went wrong in every single audition that I did. I split my trousers in the dance call. Yeah. Uh, I sang. I, I forgot my music to one of them. Completely forgot all of it. And um, and then and then in another one, I was playing the guitar along, and I completely went to the wrong chords at the wrong time, and I just stopped dead. And I said, "Sorry, I think I peaked too early." But fortunately, there was laughed, which is a good sign. Laughter is good. I think English audiences listen a lot more to to the. Um you know, to the piece and to see what's going on. They follow the story. Sometimes they're very quiet, and you go out there and you know you you you're basically a really high impact show, and you know you want them to start going crazy straight away. But I think that's what you know an English audience is. I think it's it's reserved because it's listening. It wants to know what's going on. It wants to it wants to get involved in it. You know, it wants to go as deep as it can. And in in, you know, with the English crowd, the songs are a bonus. 